Well, good afternoon. Today is Thursday. Can you believe it? It's Thursday already. I have to, I'm losing track of the days of the week. Let me tell you, when Monday's a holiday, it throws my whole week off. But today is Thursday, September 5th. It's quite breezy, so hopefully we're not getting too much whooshing sounds. Um, I was going to wear a microphone, but it still seems to pick up the noise even more. But we have birthdays, like I said. Today is Colleen's birthday, so Colleen, happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Colleen. Happy birthday to you. Cha cha cha. It's also David over at a uh, girl on her phone. David's birthday today. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear David. Happy birthday to you. Cha cha cha. You might know him as Mr. Smooth. Jimmy gave him that nickname. <laughs> um, it's also Maxine Couch's birthday. So, Maxine. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Maxine. Happy birthday to you. Cha cha cha. Sally Pollard. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Sally. Happy birthday to you. Cha cha cha. Roseanne Wachowski. W A C H O W S K I. Did I say your name right, Diane? Diane. Roseanne, I said your first name wrong. <laughs> the easy one, Roseanne, I say I say Diane. But no, Roseanne Wachowski, Wachowski. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Roseanne. Happy birthday to you. Cha-cha-cha. Well, I hope all five of you have a great, great birthday today. But we have an anniversary because today is Bruce and Janet Colbert's 27th anniversary. Happy anniversary, happy anniversary, happy anniversary, happy anniversary. Happy, 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 happy anniversary. Happy, 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 happy anniversary. Well, I hope you have a great anniversary. Let me move you over to my other hand here now. It's a really nice day out here. It's starting to get cool. We're supposed to have a cold front come in for the weekend, and then we're supposed to have our last big hurrah of summer next week. We're supposed to get some rain tonight, so I'm going to have to put the covers on my furniture. I am still reading the the five star weekend, which I really am enjoying. I really am. But I did get a birthday card today from Barty. So let me show you the card. I guess my card, and it says, "For a special sister in law, it's true that we can't choose our family like we can choose our friends, but sometimes we get lucky." And this family is so lucky to have you. Hope you have a wonderful birthday. Wishing you many, many more, Bertie and Ron. Well, that was very sweet of her. And I also wanted to thank Kathy Wolsey, W-O-O-L-S-E-Y. She sent me an e-greeting, and she invited a snowman and a cardinal to join in on the festivities. So thank you, Kathy. That was very nice. I really liked that. It was kind of cute. Um, Ron had the nurse come to the house today. So, because he was supposed to go to a clinic or something. And then when the nurse, the visiting nurse came yesterday, uh, she said, you know, I can come back tomorrow and take your blood so you don't have to go out of the house. And we both thought that was a very good idea. <laughs> so she came today and uh, took his blood. Uh, yesterday when she was there, it was like I was the wife. Because, like, when they were, she was examining him, um, she says, well... You know, you should probably do physical therapy. No, I'm not doing physical therapy. She said, well, I really think you should do physical therapy. No, I don't want to do physical therapy. I said, Ron, you should do physical therapy. I said, they come right to the house. You don't have to leave the house if that's what you're worried about. And then if you don't want to go afterwards because you'll be stronger when you have to leave the house, then you can make a decision then. I said, but I think you should. I think, I think they're going to teach you how to um, handle this better and give you a little bit more strength with some exercises that you don't have to worry about maybe you shouldn't be doing. Yeah, okay, I'll do therapy. <laughs> so she did therapy. And then uh, while the nurse was there, he had to go to the bathroom. And uh, so he walked part. He only walked part way, and then he pushed the chair the rest of the way because he's got the hardwood floors, and so he had sliders on the bottom of the chair so he could slide the chair. And then when he came back and sat down, he was very winded. And uh, um, she says, don't you have a walker? And he says, no, I don't want a walker. And she says, well, you know, I think a walker would be better because you'd feel a little bit more secure. Because he walked part of the way with a cane. I should have mentioned that. He walked part of the way with the cane until he got to where the chair was. And then he pushed the chair the rest of the way. And he wasn't very steady on the cane. And I think that's why he was breathing so hard. And so she had said, 
I think you need a walker. And say, no, I don't want a walker. And I said, Ron, you would distribute your weight so much better. And it's not that you really need it for a long period of time, but then you'll have it just in case and it'll make you feel a little bit more secure and you won't have to worry about falling. I said, because when I had my knee replaced, I couldn't walk without a walker, but I never felt like I was going to fall because I had something to hold on to. Okay, I'll have a walker. <laughs> I was like the nagging old wife. And so then uh, she that little breathing thing where you got to blow in and have the little ball bounce and stuff. He said, what are you going to tell me about this? I said, well, I'm thinking you don't do it enough because I've been here for a couple hours and I've only seen you do it once. I said, you should probably be doing that every 15 minutes. And the nurse said, well, maybe every half hour. She said, but 15 minutes would be better. He picked it up and started blowing in it. <laughs> but the first time he walked, um, we were sitting in his living room, and he said, do you want to go sit out in the patio? And I said, is that too far of a walk for you? He says, no, I should be able to do that fine. And so I went to the bathroom, and when I came back, he was having a panic attack, which I can deal with because I know I, ha I know how to handle them. And because uh, he couldn't catch his breath, and he was his, he was scared to death. You could see his face; he was like scared to death. So I just kind of actually gave him a somewhat, not a real full fledged hug, <laughs> but a little bit of a hug, <laughs> and uh, calmed him down. And I said, just you know, breathe through your nose, concentrate on your breathing. Don't think that you're not catching your breath because you are. And so then he, I said, why don't we just sit right here? Because we got the breeze from the patio door. And so we played some kind of a dice game for a while. But he's doing so much better today. I mean, each day, is, I mean, it's been a week. So he's been nine days since uh, he's had the surgery. So every day he gets a little bit stronger. And then Jim and I went and, I told you last week, we went and got some quotes for our insurance. And then we went over to our insurance agent. And I'm looking at the place and I'm thinking, this looks like a trash place. I haven't been here in a while. I'm thinking, well, this looks really bad. And so then he brought us in the back and uh, he says, I apologize for the way the place looks. We're in the process of moving down the street. So we have everything stacked up and everything. And I thought, well, that kind of explains it. It was funny because when the, we first walked in, the receptionist, you know, I said, well, we had an appointment. So she went to go get them. I thought she said, would you like something to drink? And I said, no, that's okay. Thanks anyhow. And then taking a minute and thinking, oh, she was asking my name. <laughs> I said, oh, it's Jim and Sandy Carrico. So she says, oh, okay. So she went and then she come back. I said, I thought you were offering us something to drink. That's why I said, no, thank you. She says, I couldn't understand why you didn't want to tell me your name. You have an appointment. <laughs> so, But uh, he even said, he says, you know what? Um, I, I, he says, I can't beat this. And he said, and it's a good company. He said, it's not a sham. And he says, it's like he said, like, progressive gives you a really good quote for the first six months, and then they steadily raise it, which is what my sister Denise said, that that's what they did with her, too. So he looked at the three different quotes that we had, and he picked up the one. It was not the cheapest, but it was not the most expensive, either. It was kind of like, in the, what was the middle one, obviously? There's three of them. And uh, I think it's Citizens. He says, if I could match this, I would match it. And he says, because you've been with us a long time. And he says, but, you know, you've been with us a long time, and I want to be honest with you. And he said, this is the one I would go with. So we have an appointment tomorrow to go talk to the other, the new agent. It's almost, I think for our six months, we were paying for six months for both of our cars, 2400 or 2200 for the six months. And for them, for the, for the whole year, it is uh, 29 so I can save like almost $400. And it, all exact same coverage. Everything. He looked at line to line. Everything was exactly the same line to line. So I said, well, I hate to leave you, but I'm leaving you for $400. That's a lot of money. He said, no, I agree. So my payments each month will be two forty nine dollars as opposed to four nineteen. dollars How can I go wrong with that? But we're going to keep our life insurance, my life insurance there with them. And then... Uh, going to watch my videos later. I'm going to sit outside as long as I can because the weather is starting to cool off. I woke up last night not feeling well. Just, I don't know, I was having really massive stomach cramps and I was laughing at making fun of, no, Jim was making fun of me rather is because I had uh, a bowl of ice cream and I have must be lactose intolerant, intolerant after a certain time because I know that if I eat ice cream after 7 o'clock at night, I'm going to get sick. I just know I'm going to get sick. And at 9 o'clock, I just thought, I feel like a bowl of ice cream. So I had a big bowl of Rocky Road ice cream. Went to bed early because I just 
was tired. Went to bed at 12.30. And um, woke up at 3. Oh, oh my gosh. It was like I was doubled over in pain. I almost thought I was having appendicitis attack. It was awful. And then went in the bathroom, did some business. Got back in bed. And I just tossed and turned for about an hour. But then I slept until it was time to get up. So, And then I woke up. I was still a little queasy. But I'm feeling okay now. So I, I'm really contributing it to the, um, or attributing it, attributing it to the um, ice cream. I didn't need it. I really didn't need it. But I just kind of was craving it. And then I was trying to figure out why I go to bed so late and stay up and miss so much of the day. And I think probably one of the ra main reasons that I stay up so late in the summer is I stay outside so long. Because I stay outside till like 9, 9.30 at night. And then so it's, when I go in, it's dark. And then I think, well, I have to stay up for three or four hours. Whereas in the winter, it gets dark like 4, 35 o'clock. And then by 11 o'clock, 11, 30, I'm thinking, kind of, it's been dark a long time. I better go to bed, if that makes any sense. But I know, I have an odd sense of uh, thinking about things, I guess. But So, yeah, I can't think of anything else. I'm going to finish reading a little bit more. That's it. So until we talk again tomorrow, hopefully I see you then. See you soon. But now you don't want to leave me. You don't want to leave me.